Hi, I'm Michelle the Irritable Vegan. I'm here to share my vegan low FODMAP journey and hopefully take some of the BS out of IBS. Now today I'd like to share with you some pantry staples and recipes for using up whatever you have to hand. Now I'm going to try and make these tips as general as possible so that they apply to every vegan low FODMAP kitchen whenever you might be watching this but I also want to make it specific enough that it's going to be of some real help to you during these very unusual times that we find ourselves in. Now before we begin I just want to say that in no way am I encouraging you to rush out and buy everything that I'm going to show you today. Rather, what I want you to do is think about experimenting with possibly the things that you find at the back of your cupboard that you may not have had the confidence to use before or that you may not be overly familiar with and also to come up with maybe some new ways of using up ingredients that you may find yourself needing to cook with day after day after day. Practically everything that you see here today are items that I already had in stock. And that's just due to the nature of the types of videos that I make here on YouTube and also to my normal eating preferences. I didn't purposely go out and buy any of these things solely with the intention of making this video. And everything I'm going to show you today are things that I use on a weekly, if not a daily basis. I last visited my local Aldi just over a week ago and I have to say they were fantastically well stocked and I really do think they're doing a marvellous job. Here in the UK, we've had some strict measures put in place to avoid the likelihood of people panic buying. And I, for one, am genuinely really grateful for, for those measures, even though they came a little bit too late, in my opinion. So please make sure that wherever you are, wherever you're watching from, you're taking advice from your local government and you're acting accordingly. So with all that being said, let's get into it. Before we get started, I just want to explain a little bit more about how this mini-series is going to work. This was originally filmed as one video but ended up being way too long, so I decided to break it up into sections. Each section will feature different types of pantry staples with low FODMAP tips and recipe ideas for how to make the best of them. I'm hoping to release one section per day for the next week, so by the end of the week we'll in effect have an entire pantry staple tour broken down into sections. By doing it this way, it's going to be much easier for you to find the section that applies to the ingredients that you have available. Now because this was intended to be one video, each section will feature the same intro and outro and that's because each section in the series needs to work as a standalone video. Because some people may only ever watch one episode, it all needs to make sense. If you'll be watching more than one video in the series, and I really hope that you do, I'll pop a timestamp in the description box so that once you've seen the intro on the first video, you can skip straight to the content on the rest. The only thing that you do need to know is that the video clips playing over this part of the intro will change depending on what we're talking about. So if you prefer seeing some visual inspiration for recipes, you might still want to watch this part. As the series progresses, make sure that you check the description box because as each video releases, I'll be leaving a link to it below. And also the recipes, videos and resources that are linked to will change to reflect the ingredients featured each day. I hope all that makes sense and I really hope you find this series helpful. And now, let's get into it. So another really versatile pantry staple that I wanted to talk about was fine cornmeal or polenta grain. Now the reason I wanted to include this is prior to the low FODMAP diet I'd actually never experimented with making my own polenta from scratch. I was only familiar with the types of firm polenta that you usually buy in the supermarket that typically, co typically come in like a little square cake. So I really wanted to include this not only for its versatility but also because it's a type of ingredient that you are quite likely to find outside of your local supermarket. So uh, it, here in the UK we have a lot of Asian grocers, we have a lot of African grocers and those types of places are quite likely to carry something like this. So please do bear in mind when you are doing your shopping that some of your smaller, more local shops, perhaps shops that you may not be used to shopping in, are much more likely to have things like this in stock if you find that your local supermarket is running low on dried goods. This one was actually bought at the international aisle of my local supermarket, but I know from places where I've lived in the past that it is usually quite easy to come by in local corner shops. 
so that being said it is so versatile to begin with it can be used in place of a flour so in something like a cornbread in corn tortillas for flatbreads it can be used in dredging it can be used as a thickener it can be used as a coating it really is a, a fantastic alternative and a replacement for flour. The only thing to bear in mind is that the grain is actually much denser than the flours that you're probably used to using and in that case you would probably need to use more liquid and it's advisable to allow the recipe to sit for longer to give more time for the grains to fully absorb the, the liquid that you have added. I do have a cornbread recipe in Got Guts Feast Without FODMAPs and I do believe that I soaked the cornmeal for that overnight before using. So please just double check that on, on recipes online and, and just get a, a real good feel for it before you start trying to, to bake with it in the way that you would bake traditionally with, with the flour that you used to. In addition to that, it can obviously be used as a soft polenta and I've used it that way as a replacement for scrambled eggs. I've used it as a replacement for quiche. So popped it together, made it up into a soft polenta, popped it together with some tofu, whatever veggies I had on hand, put it into a muffin tray, baked it in the oven, and then you're left with some really handy little lunchbox size breakfast muffins almost, breakfast crustless quiches. Fantastic for kids, fantastic for lunch boxes and uh, something a little bit different. Obviously you can eat it as a soft polenta in place of mashed potatoes. It's delicious simply with butter, salt, pepper, a little bit of nutritional yeast for cheesiness if you have it. So alongside any main meal where you would traditionally have a mashed potato it can be used and then finally just to show off its versatility, you can actually have it firm. So if you make the soft polenta up a little bit firmer than you would tend to eat it as a, as a soft polenta and then pop it into a greased baking tray and allow it to cool, it actually sets into a firm cake. So that can then be chopped up into fingers and used as polenta chips. Throwing, throwing gently in some spices, popped in the oven and baked, and you've got you've got an alternative to chips. It can also be used as if you cut out um, rounds as an alternative to a pizza base. And depending on how thick you actually set it, it could maybe be sliced lengthways and used in place of bread, purely toasted with a little bit of butter on. So it really is a versatile ingredient and it's a really good one to keep on hand if it's available to you. So there you have it. Now I've really tried to make sure that all of these tips apply to your vegan low FODMAP pantry whenever, wherever you're watching this from. But obviously at this moment in time, I really hope that these tips are gonna serve you well. Please take care of yourself and your family, buy only what you need and what you're realistically going to use over the coming weeks. I think we can all agree that our retail workers at the minute are doing a hell of a job. Please let's not make their job any harder than it needs to be. I'm pretty certain that most of them would much rather be at home safe and sound with their loved ones. Please reach out to me in the comments below to share your tips with the rest of our little community and also to ask for any recipe advice, any meal ideas or inspiration that you may need. You can check out the other videos and playlists that I have available. I really think that some of them are going to be useful to you now and in the future. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll speak to you soon. Bye!